sharing with you. Okay, thank you everyone and for the ANSAF uh, organization for giving me this opportunity to address this uh, audience and also to address the community uh, via the internet to tell you a little bit about my uh, one of the aspects I'm interested in uh, with regards to my research at the University of Surrey and the broad idea of my research stream is basically to uh, uh, understand the new metabolic or the role that new metabolic and stress pathways play in uh, mediating cardiovascular complications associated with metabolic disorders namely uh, obesity and type 2 diabetes and uh, the focus today of this talk will be uh, uh, obesity and diabetes. As you can see here from this map, you can see the prevalence of diabetes in the world and you can see clearly that apart from the traditional or the usual suspects as uh, 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 you can see here, uh, America, Northern America and Western Europe, the MENA region which is uh, uh, the, the part where Algeria belongs, in North Africa and the Middle East it has a very high uh, prevalence of uh, type 2 diabetes with Algeria reaching 8.5 percent for example of uh, diabetics among the general uh, population. Uh, the F National Federation of Diabetics uh, consider that we have around 3 million diabetics in Algeria and there are many more that are not yet diagnosed. Diabetes is not only a public health concern, but it's also an economic uh, uh, burden. And you can see here that uh, we have uh, 4.8 million people die every year of diabetes, with a staggering 471 billion US dollars are spent overall in the world to treat diabetes. The situation in Algeria is no different, with an annual cost of around half a billion US dollars are spent every year to treat and uh, prevent diabetes in Algeria, which you can compare to the figure of uh, 2.5 billion US dollars that are spent every year for uh, the healthcare uh, system in terms of importing drugs and uh, treatments. So diabetes is very closely associated with obesity and diet induced obesity that is related to lifestyle, western lifestyle and uh, dietary habits is uh, 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 very clear today and you can see from this diagram that uh, uh, the, the risk of developing diabetes increases in a very uh, strong uh, positive relationship with the increasing of uh, abdominal uh, obesity which is now recognized to be the key uh, uh, the, the key uh, the, the type of obesity that triggers most of the complications associated with uh, metabolic disorders Similarly, this uh, increase in uh, abdominal obesity and the increased risk of uh, diabetes is also associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease. We don't die because we have high levels of sugar in the blood, but we die because of the complications or cardiovascular complications associated with diabetes. And you can see here uh, the HOPE study shows uh, 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 the cardiovascular disease, the deaths from cardiovascular disease, myocardial infarction, and all cause of deaths together and you can see that there is a linear relationship between uh, ob abdominal obesity and uh, increased numbers of deaths from cardiovascular disease, myocardial infarction and death uh, uh, as a whole. So there is a close relationship between obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease and death. So it is very important to understand the molecular mechanisms or the cellular mechanisms that change within the body and that will lead to type 2 diabetes and ultimately to cardiovascular disease to try and find new preventive and therapeutic uh, 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 targets. So uh, when we talk about diabetes and metabolism uh, disorders in general, we have to talk about insulin, the general manager of the uh, glucose levels in the blood. And insulin will target basically every single cell in the body, but particularly some uh, tissues are uh, uh, specifically targeted by the hormone like the adipose tissue, the skeletal muscle, the liver, the brain, and of course, the pancreas. And 
how all this works together. So when we have a meal, the levels of the glucose will shoot up, and then the beta cells within the pancreas will produce insulin that then will interact with the specific receptor that you can find on any target cell, which, as I said, is virtually every single cell in the body, with, uh, but specifically those that I just mentioned. When insulin interacts with the receptor, there is an event of phosphorylation. So there is inorganic phosphate groups that will be added to the uh, luminar side of the insulin receptor. And this will give basically the signal to the cell that we should activate or promote some uh, 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 signals that will ultimately lead to glucose uptake, increased glucose storage, that will reduce the levels of glucose in the blood. One of the mechanisms I'm interested in, in terms of research, is the role of phosphatases, which are a group of enzymes that basically, what they do, they just dephosphorylate these uh, 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 phosphates here, remove them, and therefore impair these signaling pathway. And the body will respond by producing further insulin, trying to compensate for the mechan for, for, for this impairment, and this is referred to insulin resistance, the pre-diabetic state, which will then lead to the death of these cells. They produce too much. They are under heavy demand continuously, so they will lead to their death and therefore to diabetes and finally to the complications or the cardiovascular complications. My research focuses on one specific enzyme called protein tyrosine phosphatase 1b. And we have uh, generated a specific mouse where we deleted this gene specifically in the liver, one of the major targets of the insulin within the body. And we subjected these animals to high fat diet. This is what really we do. We go to McDonald's, we eat, we watch TV, and we are very sedentary. So we put on weight. And you can see here that under high fat diet condition, these animals, compared to their wild type, which have the gene, become obese to the same extent when they eat fat. However, when you look at their capacity of clearing glucose, so, so when you ingest glucose, the insulin will try to reduce the level of glucose, and that's what we call clearance. So we inject glucose to these animals, and then we monitor over time how fast they will clear glucose from the body. And you can see Clearly here, in black dots here, you have the knockout that they clear a lot faster the uh, glucose from the blood compared to the wild types, which has been accompanied also with an improved capacity of these animals to eject blood in, uh, into, the, uh, into the, uh, the body, which is called the cardiac index. So you can see here, when they eat fat, the wild type animals, they have a lower cardiac index, a lower capacity to eject the blood into the body, and the knockouts are completely prevented, so they have the same uh, uh, capacity of ejection of blood into the system uh, as normal uh, animals. So in conclusion, pt b is today, or liver pt b particularly, is today a very attractive therapeutic target, not only for diabetes, but also for cardiovascular complications associated with diabetes. But before I leave you, remember that there is no replacement for a good, healthy lifestyle, balancing food choices, low sugar products, and being active like Makhloufi. And thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Bilal. Any questions for the man? Yeah, one question. Just, uh, it's very interesting to point out the pre-diabetic syndrome, which is quite prevalent nowadays yep. due to the fat around the middle. So have you also looked into cortisol effects, stress hormone, which actually works as a transporter once uh, insulin resistant becomes significant? Is that something which is it, it, Actually, no, no, no not cortisol. Because it, 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 but stress as a, a per se, yes. You know, oxidative stress, for example, rich, on the plasma reticulum stress uh, also. It, 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 the, this kind of stress, yes. And I think there is a, an, a, a quite genuine interlink between the uh, 
the stress and cortisol is a response basically to stress. Yeah, and and it causes glucose to, to, to go up. Yeah, but, well, no, I, 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 we didn't really investigate cortisol at all, but surely there is a link. Yeah. Well, thank you. One other question. Okay. I've heard from reading newspapers in Algeria that um, uh, diabetes amongst um, young children, uh, also incidences of, uh, of cancer have increased. Uh, do you have any more information about what's happening in Algeria to uh, to population in general, about it, 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 the problem of Algeria is very difficult to have uh, a very um, precise uh, surveys and and diagnosis. There's a problem of diagnosis in Algeria. It, it's very common that someone is diabetic. He's testing his blood sugar, and he will test his neighbor or friend, and then by coincidence he will find that also his friend uh, is also diabetic and if you compare the figures to uh, uh, in Algeria to our neighbors for example yes we can uh, uh, suspect that there is a problem of uh, diabetes type 2 diabetes I'm not talking about the type one which is genetic and only 10 percent of people can have it it, it, it is starting to, to kick off because of obesity in children for example in the UK we we'll start talking about one in ten children at reception are obese at reception, which means uh, three, four years old. So I don't think Algeria is uh, anything different because the figures in Algeria are even more important than in this country, for example, where we have uh, more uh, statistics available. Uh, uh, but definitely the problem is uh, uh, reaching even younger children. Uh, uh, Probably uh, uh, because of the change in lifestyle, uh, in physical inactivity, which is very, very high in Algeria. I think we are around 40% of inactive people in, uh, in Algeria, according to some uh, few available surveys. Yeah. One more question. Is there one back? Uh, yes, could that research potentially be to a new therapeutic agent that would Yes, actually there, there is some, um, here I mentioned uh, uh, liver pit B as a, a target, it's easier to produce, uh, I speak under the control of the Raji who is a chemist and probably other chemists, it's probably a little bit easier to produce a, 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 a chemical that can target an enzyme and will go uh, to the liver and produce the, uh, the effects, uh, uh, you know, quite uh, uh, immediately. Uh, uh, however, it's not very easy to produce uh, an inhibitor for a phosphatase because phosphatase is a very small family of uh, enzymes, and the uh, active pocket is quite similar between the uh, the two. For example, uh, SHP2, which is another phosphatase, shares 70 percent of homology sequence between uh, with p one B and therefore a specific ta selective target, uh, we don't talk about specific, selective target ch chemical can be very challenging to produce. Nevertheless, there are some available at the moment, but they are all at the preclinical level. Nothing is yet at the clinical phase, even one or two. Yeah. Well, let's thank uh, Dr. Agun again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.